if you're truly engaged in human transformation and you're truly engaged in opening your heart, truly engaged in the supernatural and the mystical, and you're sincere, that energy is going to thrust you to that outcome, to that end. And so there's this turbulence going on with human beings where we're stuck between two worlds and there's no relief. You can't get relief from anything. So uh, if you do a drug, if you, if you go to a football game, you go shopping, yeah, the feeling goes away, but when the novelty of that feeling wears off, here comes the old feeling of emptiness and insecurity and people now are no longer going to church to find the answers or no longer believing in governments any longer. They're looking for answers that are practical. And so my interest is to provide the proper content of information scientifically to people so that they reason that this is actually possible. Then to give them the opportunity to experience that philosophy and get their behaviors to match their intentions as many ways as I can. Now, if I do that properly, people are going to have new experiences. The experiences are going to change the circuitry in their brain. Learning makes connections, but experience enriches connections. The end product of an experience is an emotion. So when you start feeling worthy, when you start feeling a love for yourself, when you start feeling a love for life, when you start feeling truly grateful, the moment you feel that emotion, you're teaching your body to understand what your mind has understood. So then if I can break it down so that people understand everything from circuitry to genes to the mind-body connection to the quantum model of reality, and they can really begin to verbalize it. That's the language that they can verbalize it. They're installing the circuitry in their brain for the experience. In other words, the more they understand what they're doing and why, the how will get easier. Today, you will learn everything you need to know to turn your life into a beautiful adventure. Many people struggle with accepting this teachings 100%. They agree with them, but they hesitate to use it. It seems too simple to be true. But you don't need to look at this as just a theoretical concept. You can look at this teaching as a practical concept, as a concept with common sense. For example, saying that you are the creator or your consciousness makes common sense. Because Without your consciousness, your true essence, you as a character in this world wouldn't exist, nor your friends or your family. As a matter of fact, without you conscious, the whole world wouldn't exist, not even God. That should make sense. Without your consciousness or your imagination, you couldn't do anything. Can you become a wealthy person if you never see yourself being wealthy in your mind first? It just doesn't have anything with common sense. You are the creator. You are the electromagnetic being. You are the magnet. And that's scientifically proven. You can remember how you were thinking and feeling in the past few weeks, and you will see the evidences in your life that confirm those thoughts and feelings. Your life should be your proof that your world and your life are just a physical reflection of your inner drama, of your state of being. You don't need to wish for something or try to achieve something. You only need to become that person right now and keep that picture in your mind long enough and you will start seeing the outer reflection change. Your physical world will always reflect what you think and feel about yourself. Let me ask you something strange. What does it mean to you to be supernatural? To me, being supernatural means being able to change your body just by thinking. It means being more than your body. It also means overcoming challenges that most people can't and changing your future. Is this only for ancient yogis and superheroes or is there proof that everyone can do it? Let's start with some basics about your brain. Think of it like having three brains in one. The first brain is your neocortex, which is where your conscious thoughts happen. It's the biggest and most advanced part and it connects you to reality. It's divided into different areas, and the biggest part is the frontal brain. This part is like the CEO or the leader of a symphony. The frontal lobe helps us make decisions, focus, be creative, and control our emotions. It's like the boss of our brain's actions and thoughts. Other parts of the brain have their own jobs too. 
For example, the back part, called the occipital lobe, deals with sight. There are also areas for feeling sensations, moving, making memories, and understanding ourselves. When we learn something new, our brain forms new connections. Research shows that concentrating on one thing for just an hour can double these connections, which is like physical proof of learning. All this knowledge gets stored in the neocortex, our thinking brain. The next step is to use this knowledge in our lives. If we can match our actions with our thoughts, our mind and body work together better, giving us new experiences. When we're experiencing things, our senses send information to our brain, which then organizes it into patterns. When you have an experience, it affects the way your brain thinks. This triggers the emotional part of your brain, which releases chemicals that make you feel certain ways, like happy or free. So, when you feel a certain way, your body learns to understand it chemically, not just intellectually. This emotional part of the brain also controls things your body does automatically, like breathing and heart rate. When you have an experience that triggers emotions, it changes your body. If you can create that experience again and again, you start to train your mind and body to work together. Doing something repeatedly creates habits or skills. Eventually, you don't even have to think about it anymore. It becomes automatic. This is because your brain forms memories that you don't have to consciously remember. Our goal is to move from just knowing things to experiencing them and then to truly understanding them. People all over the world are using this approach to heal from illnesses, overcome challenges, and even have amazing spiritual experiences. And they're just regular folks like you and me. Let's discuss how our brain works in different ways. You may have heard that when you lose brain cells, they don't come back. But there's a new field called neurogenesis, which is about growing new brain cells. Research shows that when people learn new things and have new experiences, they actually grow new brain cells. And this change starts happening in just four days. In the past, scientists thought brain cells couldn't grow back but they were studying animals in boring environments. If there's no new stuff to do or see, the brain doesn't change much. Now let's think about you. If you think the same thoughts every day, your brain and body stay the same. But what if new thoughts lead to new choices, new behaviors, and new experiences? Our research says that when you change your thoughts, everything else changes too. Another idea is coherence which is like having rhythm or order in your brain. When you're stressed, your brain gets all jumbled up, like a storm in the clouds. This makes it hard for your brain to work properly, and you feel out of sorts. We have three special brains that help us think, act, and just be. Each brain is like its own computer in our bodies. They have their own parts, chemicals, and ways of working. They even have their own stories and understanding of time and space. The first brain is called the neocortex. It's the newest part in our evolution and looks like a wrinkly walnut on the outside. It's the most advanced and specialized, especially in humans. Right below it is the limbic brain, which handles emotions and chemicals in our bodies. It's about the size of a lemon. Then there's the cerebellum at the back of the brainstem, known as the reptilian brain. It's the oldest part of our brains and controls things we do without thinking, like breathing. Our brains are made up of about 100 billion nerve cells or neurons. If you stacked 100 billion sheets of paper on top of each other, it would be as tall as the distance from Los Angeles to London. Neurons can store and share information with each other. The neocortex, or thinking brain, is where our conscious thoughts happen. When we learn something new, our brain makes new connections. For example, when you read a book or learn a new skill, your brain physically changes to remember that information. This principle is called nerve cells that fire together, wire together. These connections form networks in our brains, like groups of neurons working together. 
These networks help us remember things, learn skills, or even have thoughts. Our brains generate more electrical impulses in one day than all the cell phones on Earth put together. In simple terms, the mind is what happens when our brain is active. It's like the brain's job. Because our brain is made up of so many nerve cells, it can work in different ways. When it works differently, our mind changes too. Your brain is like a big jigsaw puzzle, and each time it works on something, it's like putting the pieces together in new ways. When you understand something in your head, but then actually use it in your life, your behavior changes. And when your actions change, you have new experiences. When you're experiencing something like seeing, smelling, or feeling things, your brain is taking it all in. It sorts through this information, and when it finds a pattern it likes, it releases chemicals called emotions. These emotions enrich your brain circuits and create memories in your emotional brain. So let's say you read a book that really inspires you. You think about it a lot, talk to others about it, and it starts shaping your thoughts and actions. Maybe you become more compassionate or forgiving. But then something happens, like a reminder of a past hurt, and those old feelings come rushing back. The key is, our brain loves routines. It likes to put things on autopilot so we don't always remember mundane stuff like what we had for dinner. But when something big happens, like 9 11 it sticks in our memory because it changes how we feel inside. So, when you're going through life and learning new things, remember, it's not just your brain at work, it's your mind evolving with every experience. Stress is when your body gets thrown off balance, like when you see a lion and your body gears up to deal with danger. But it doesn't have to be a real lion. Even just thinking about something stressful can trigger the same reaction. When your brain sends signals to your body that you're stressed, it prepares you for action. Your heart might beat faster, your breathing changes, and you might feel tense. This reaction used to be helpful when facing real danger, but if it happens too often, it can lead to health problems. The interesting thing is, when you start thinking about what's stressing you out, you can actually observe your own thoughts and feelings. This is called metacognition. It's like being able to step back and see what's going on in your own mind. When you notice that your thoughts are stressing you out, you can start to change them. Your brain can rewire itself, creating new connections and pathways. This helps you react differently to stressful situations in the future. So, when you're feeling stressed, you can use what you've learned to calm yourself down and approach the situation in a better way. This is called setting an intention, and it helps your brain prepare for what's ahead. There's something really fascinating happening inside your brain, like a tiny, intricate dance between different parts. Picture this. You're trying to think more compassionately, but your brain is used to thinking in certain ways based on your past experiences. So, as you try to focus on compassion, all these other thoughts pop up, like feeling annoyed at your mother-in-law or wanting to skip that dinner. But if you keep focusing on compassion with determination, eventually, that thought becomes the strongest one in your mind. And when that happens, your brain makes it more permanent by sealing the connections involved in that compassionate thought. As these new connections strengthen, the old ones start to fade away. The memories of past hurts or negative feelings lose their power. All that's left is this new feeling of compassion. And when you keep practicing compassion, something amazing happens. Your body starts to feel it too. Your heart opens up and you genuinely start to feel compassion. It's like your body is learning from your mind's understanding. But it's not a one-time thing. You have to keep practicing compassion until it becomes second nature, like a habit. And when you reach that point, it's not just something you do, it's who you are. And when you're truly in that state of being, you inspire others to do the same. That's how we change the world, by changing ourselves. Understanding how our brains work can empower us to make positive changes in our lives. By recognizing the power of our thoughts and emotions, 
we can actively shape our experiences and relationships. Remember, transformation is a journey that requires patience and practice, but the rewards are profound. You know that to change your life in a positive way, you have to break your habit of negative thinking. This video found you in perfect timing. If you can build a model and explain it, you're essentially wiring your brain to prepare for the experience. The more you understand what you're doing and why, the easier it becomes, as you can attach meaning to it. By setting up the right conditions and giving proper instructions, Along with pushing your own limits, you can make your behaviors align with your intentions. When your actions match your thoughts and your mind and body work in harmony, you open the door to a new experience. This new experience not only enhances the philosophical circuits in your brain, but also triggers the release of emotions, making you feel more limitless and free. You're teaching your body at a chemical level to align with what you intellectually understand. The key is to replicate the process, as each repetition conditions your mind and body to work together seamlessly. This eventually makes it easier as your body learns to do it automatically. In the initial days, everyone's journey is about transcending their current state, rising beyond their emotions and applying the formula. By continually reminding yourself and building the mental model, you're given multiple chances to connect and overcome your limitations. With persistence, you'll eventually grasp the process, leading to remarkable transformations and experiences. This transformation is like breaking the four-minute mile. The scientific evidence, including brain scans, heart rate measurements, and immune system improvements, supports the power of this work. It shows that by changing your genes, neurotransmitters, and energy centers through focused thoughts, you can enhance your life. However, the real laboratory is observing the profound changes in individuals who apply these principles to their lives. The side effect of mastering this formula often includes healing from various health conditions. You might find incredible examples like a nurse who regained her sight after a stroke, or a lady who was blind from birth experiencing significant vision improvements. These remarkable recoveries are a testament to the transformative potential of this work. What's even more exciting is the application of these principles in the broader context of humanity and consciousness. The idea that human beings can heal and support one another, exchanging vital information and shining their light to help others, represents a higher level of collective evolution. This approach goes beyond personal healing and extends to the betterment of humanity as a whole. It's crucial to recognize the impact of your thoughts on your health and well-being and how your understanding of these processes can lead to a remarkable transformation not only in your life but also in the collective human experience. To begin exploring the uncharted territory within yourself, you must first learn to move beyond what you already know about yourself. If you keep returning to the familiar, you'll miss out on the unknown. You might wonder, but how can I know anything about the unknown? Well, you can't. And that's the point. If you try to control or predict it, you're back in the realm of the known. The journey to the unknown is like mastering any skill, be it playing tennis, golf, martial arts, working out, crocheting, or dancing the salsa. It may seem tedious in the beginning, but once you find your rhythm, it becomes a powerful practice. Consider this. Our community doesn't skip their morning meditations for a reason. They understand that something magical is unfolding, and they don't want to miss it. Regardless of how they feel in the moment, whether tired, hungover, or not in the mood, they commit to it. Because when you wake up in the morning and can't get out of bed, it's your body signaling that you can predict how your entire day will unfold. So, you must invest your time. Try this. Write down thoughts that no longer serve you, like, it's too hard. I'll start tomorrow. This doesn't feel right. Or, it's someone else's fault. Acknowledge these thoughts as if they were Gandalf blocking your path. 
By becoming conscious of them, you gain control over your thoughts. Now, consider the emotions that often lead you astray. Identify what you're addicted to, such as frustration, unworthiness, self-doubt, guilt, or shame. If you're unsure, take 30 minutes to close your eyes and observe where your mind goes, paying attention to your feelings. Make these emotions conscious so you don't slide into unconsciousness. Meditation is a powerful tool because it strips away distractions. It silences the noise of the world, enabling you to focus on what truly matters. It is essential to meditate regularly to foster a deeper connection with yourself. By consistently revisiting this practice, you become more aware of your thoughts, emotions, and the patterns that no longer serve you. This awareness empowers you to take control and replace unhelpful patterns with constructive ones. You can also fire and wire new thoughts to shape your future self. Remember, your brain is an adaptable organ. It records your past but can also be molded to represent your future. By consciously thinking about who you want to be and how you intend to contribute to the world, you install new neural pathways in your brain. With repetition, these pathways become automatic and you start living as the person you aspire to be. When you live by the hormones of stress, your attention is fixated on your body and your surroundings. You attempt to control and predict everything based on past experiences. But by breaking free from this cycle, you open the door to the vast unknown within yourself. To really delve into the unexplored parts of yourself, you need to surpass the familiar. If you keep returning to what you already know, the unknown remains out of reach. You might ask, but what can I know about the unknown? It's, well, unknown. Precisely, you can't know the unknown. If you try to control or predict it, you're back in the realm of what's known. Going on a journey into the unknown is similar to mastering a skill, be it tennis, golf, martial arts, or even dancing the salsa. It may seem tiresome initially, but as you find your rhythm, it becomes a powerful practice. As you begin to remove the layers blocking the flow of the divine within you, you'll experience heightened presence and consciousness. The side effect is that you become kinder, more loving, less judgmental, and more patient. It's a natural transformation and you'll start feeling better without needing external factors. Ultimately, you become freer and more unpredictable in your life. On our channel, we delve into the quantum field of possibilities, where thoughts become things and intentions shape our destiny. Each video is a portal to a higher state of consciousness, a gateway to unlock your true potential, and a reminder that you are the architect of your own reality. But our journey is incomplete without you. Join our community of dream weavers, change makers, and soul seekers. Subscribe now and begin a voyage of self-discovery, empowerment, and boundless potential. Together, let's rewrite the script of our lives, awaken our innate genius, and co-create a world of infinite possibilities.